Number one asks us to select all solutions to the equation m times m times m equals 729. So m times m times m is m cubed. So we're really kind of looking at m cubed equals 729. And we see they haven't really simplified the solutions much. So we can probably go from here. So would this be the square root of 729? And no, because square root of 729 would be the solution to m squared equals 729. So that's not going to be good. We don't just divide by 3 to undo this exponent. That would be if it said 3 times m equals 729. Square root of 729 divided by 3, no. One-third of the square root of 729, no. 729 to the one-third power, yes. So one-third because this is 3. So one-third, 729 to the one-third, or the cube root of 729. Both of those are the same, are equivalent, and both of those are solutions to this. Number two, in a pond, the area that is covered by algae doubles each week. When the algae was first spotted, the area it covered was about 12.5 square meters. Find the area in square meters covered by the algae after seven, um, after 10 days after it was spotted. So in this case, when we're talking about this, remember that the algae is in weeks and this is in days. So we have to figure out 10 days equals how many weeks. So that's going to be 10 divided by 7 weeks because we take the 10 days divided by there's 7 days in a week. So um, we're going to be looking at the number of algae present after 10 sevenths of a week. So then we'll have 12.5 and then this is going to double and then our exponent here is going to be 10 sevenths instead of just 10. 10 would be if it doubled every day. So it's uh, going to give us about 33.65 algae. So explain why we can find the area covered by the algae one day after it was spotted by multiplying 12.5 times the seventh root of 2. So if we think about changing this seventh root of 2 into an exponent, okay, instead of a radical, we've got an exponent of 1 with this 2, okay, so then we'll have um, 12.5 and then times 2 to the 1 half, or sorry, se um, 1 seventh power because this 7 would go down here under the 1. So one seventh of a week equals one day. So if we wanted it after one day, we would want one seventh of a doubling period or one seventh of a week. Number three, the function M defined by this represents the amount of medicine in milligrams in a patient's body. H is the number of hours after the me medicine was administered. So what does M of 0.5 mean? So then this is going to be 0.5 hours or 30 minutes. So then this is going to be the amount of medicine um, in, the, in the body after 30 minutes or after one half hour, whichever you prefer saying, after a half hour or 30 minutes. Then this graph represents the function m. Um, use the graph to estimate m of 0.5 hours. So we'll go here. So here's one hour. So 0.5 is here. Okay, so then this is 250, 300. Halfway between would be 275. So then this is maybe like 260 something around there. Um, suppose the medicine is administered at noon. Use the graph to estimate the amount of medicine left in the body at 4.30. So noon to 4.30, that means we have 4.5 hours. 
So then we're looking at 4.5 hours here and looking at the output. So this is 75. So this is just over 75. So maybe like 80, 82, 83, something like that. So 80 milligrams after four and a half hours. Number four, the area covered by a lake is 11 square kilometers. It's decreasing exponentially at a rate of 2% per year and can be modeled by this equation. What factor does the area decrease in 10 years? So each year it's decreasing by a factor of 0.98. So after 10 years, it's going to decrease by a factor of 0.98 to the 10th. So you can leave it as 0.98 to the 10th, or you can actually calculate that out. And it's going, to, so that's going to be a decrease of 0.817 after 10 years. By what factor does the area decrease each month? So then you want to know one month equals how much of a year. So one month equals one twelfth of a year. Since there's 12 months in every year and you want to divide this down to get months. So then 12 over 12 would be one. So one month equals one twelfth of a year. So then this is going to decrease at um, 0.98 to the one twelfth power. Or you could write that as the twelfth root of 0.98. So either one of those is fine. Number five, the third and fourth numbers in an exponential sequence are 100 and 500. What are the first and second? So we've got first, second, third is 100, fourth is 500. And now this is in an exponential sequence. So we know that it's multiplying um, by the same number. So 100 to get to 500 is multiplying by five. So in order to go back and find these other two, we would know we would just need to undo the multiplication or divide by five. So 100 divided by five is 20, 20 divided by five is four. So the first term is four, second term is 20. Number six, the population of a city in thousands is modeled by this function where T is the number of years after 1950, which of the following are predicted by the model? Select all that apply. So the population in 1950 was 250. Well, they have the initial population in here at 250, but remember it's in thousands. So it's not 250, it's 250,000. So part B is correct. The population grows by 1% each year. So we can see that the growth factor is 1.01, .01, which as a percent is 101%. So that is an increase of 1% from the 100 if it wasn't growing. So yes, this is true. The population in 1951 is 275,000. So we would plug in okay one year here so we're going to multiply by 1.01 .01 to the first so 250 times 1.01 .01 is 252.5 so this would be 252,500 um, which is not 275,000 and the population grows exponentially yes because this growth factor is higher than one, so it's growing exponentially.